And welcome back to 11 TV Hill. Immigration has been one of the hottest issues of the 2016 election cycle, and the presidential nominees are pushing dramatically different plans. Sally Kidd is in Washington to break it all down for us. The immigration issue does seem to be having an impact. Polls in the traditionally red state of Arizona, for example, have been unusually close, and analysts attribute that to the state's large Hispanic population. By now, everyone knows the centerpiece of Donald Trump's immigration plan. We're going to build the wall. Build the wall. As beautiful as a wall can be. From the wall to mass deportations to a temporary Muslim ban with extreme vetting, Trump's plan is controversial and critics say even radical. I think you would find uh, backlash from our allies. You would find backlash from the business community. You would find backlash from mayors. Trump wants mandatory deportation of immigrants convicted of a crime and an end to birthright citizenship. We either have a country or we don't. We're a country of laws. We either have a border or we don't. He says illegal immigration is burdening taxpayers and taking jobs away from Americans. There's clearly a group in the Republican Party, uh, in the probably the right wing of the Republican Party, uh, that uh, fully embraces his position on immigration. I don't want to rip families apart. Hillary Clinton is pushing for comprehensive reform and a pathway to citizenship. Bringing undocumented immigrants out from the shadows, putting them into the formal economy will be good because then employers can't exploit them and undercut Americans' wages. That obviously would require the assistance of the Congress and as we've seen, that's been difficult over the course of the last several years. Clinton wants to allow families, regardless of immigration status, to buy health insurance. And my comprehensive immigration reform plan, of course, includes border security. Clinton opposes a large-scale border wall expansion and wants to rely more on technology and to add more patrols to keep the border secure. Now, remember back in 2012, Republican Mitt Romney won less than 30 percent of the Latino vote. That's something Republicans are hoping not to repeat on November 8th. Reporting from Washington, I'm Sally Kidd. All right, Sally, thanks. Well, as Marylanders head to the polls on Tuesday for uh, the general election, a group of advocates assembled to deliver one big message to voters. Know your rights. Because the state has seen problems in the past, officials say that they're not taking anything for granted. Maryland Attorney General Brian Frost has said that this push is a direct result of increased rancor in the presidential race. But along with Mr. Trump's urging his supporters to show up at polls in certain areas uh, to make sure that there is uh, no voter fraud, lets us know that voter uh, intimidation and uh, voter deception are still dangers to our uh, democracy. It is against the law to threaten or intimidate voters. Well, from voters' rights to a do-over at the polls, Donald Trump's encouraging early voters in Wisconsin to use their erasers and change their votes to him. Wisconsin is one of several states where you can change your early ballot if you think you've made a mistake. A lot of stuff has come out since you voted. So if you live here, or in Michigan, or Pennsylvania, or Minnesota, those four places, you can change your vote to Donald Trump will make America great again, okay? That's allowed. In fact, the Badger State and six others will let voters in their states change their early voting picks. And just to give you an idea of just how indecisive the electorate is right now, a Google Trends report shows searches for the terms, how do I change my vote, gone up 600 percent since last week, shattering the 2004 record. Now, these votes are valu valuable this time around, with an estimated 40 percent of voters headed to the polls before Election Day. Our roundtable is back in this plea to reconsider your votes, to erase it and start all over again. What do you think? Well, one of the reasons we uh, had early voting to begin with is it's because we want to make voting easier for people because people did not like the, the stress and the trying to show up on Election Day. So for me, um, the idea of getting people to not just vote once, but come back in and change sure. their vote uh, to vote again is really, really unlikely. Sure. We talked about immigration as well. What role is this going to play? We talked a little before the show. It's a huge part to play in this election. It is a major issue right now. And going forward, it's going to be one of the most important issues for the Republican Party. It's possibly the most 
most divisive issue in the Republican Party right now. Um, demographics are changing in the United States. Our country is getting more and more diverse by the day. Back in 2013, the Republican Party did an assessment of itself and said that they have to appeal to these changing demographics, and they flat out failed at that and it's not happened. And so right now, business, chamber, uh, commerce types uh, are out there saying, we've got to do something about immigration reform. They agree with the Democrats on that mm -hmm. uh, position, and so do Latinos. Uh, and uh, I think what we're gonna see now on immigration is a bitter fight, but right now it's a good election uh, issue. Is it gonna be uh, the next election? Yeah. No. We've got about a minute, minute 20 left. We've talked about a lot of negatives that have gone on in this race. <laughs> Uh, this ability that we have is truly American, and I think this is what the system is, is built for. What do you make of this year as you want to teach a lesson, I guess, to I, some? Right. I think at the end of the day, if you ask people who are diametrically opposed, if you ask Elizabeth Warren, if you ask Ted Cruz, um, what, what things do they want out of America? And yeah. they'll say the same things. They want good jobs, they want education, and they want a, stro a, a strong, stable, uh, stable democracy and a peaceful world. Sure. Um, they just have very different ways of approaching it. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of, I think at the end of the day, that's the, what we talk about in elections, and hopefully after the election we can get back to trying to push towards those goals. Dr. Max, you traveled the world before. This is unique. Well, it's unique in, it, in itself in that I think one of the things one could take out of this election in as much as we may disagree and we be publicly um, in the United States, we seldom have any violence, and uh, the results are usually respected, and I hope that will be the same this year. You get